be in order. No person having received the majority of the whole number of votes cast, a speaker has not been elected. Madam Clerk, I rise to say, wow. I'm always amazed at people who send us here to change Washington. And then you start doing it, and they go, oh, don't do that. You might upend the apple cart. I want to upend the apple cart. That's why you sent me here. It wasn't a fake fight. Too many fights up here are fake. It was a real honest debate that played out in real time. They accomplished things that I never thought I would see in Congress ever. All that was going on uh, behind the scenes, and people weren't seeing that. What they were seeing is whatever was happening on the floor. We had 20 people who were willing to go down to the floor of the House and take arrows. Didn't matter what everybody was throwing at us, you know, saying, that, well, you're risking the speakership. You guys are clowns. You guys are all self-centered. You're doing this for your own interests. It's sometimes in politics where you're usually disappointed. Someone talks a big game, and then when the bright lights hit them, uh, they find a reason to back away. But these 20-some folks, they knew if they held together, they could actually do something significant. The purpose was for this time. We took advantage of this slim majority and absolutely made a difference. Our system was designed for people to be involved. That's the ultimate check on the growth of government, what's the balance between the state and the individual, is when people get involved and they contact their legislator. So the whole reason FreedomWorks exists is to work with people to help them make their voice heard. We try and take those barriers down. And the whole point is to get people involved so they let their congressmen know, hey, this is what I would like to see changed in this bill. And the way that you get that is through the amendment process. But that's been closed. That's been shut down for years now. The cake is almost always baked in the committee. And sometimes it's really hard to get on the committee that you need to be on for an issue that matters a lot to your constituents. If you don't get on that committee at the beginning of the year, all of your ability to represent your constituents was ceded. Power had steadily moved away from members and into the hands of the speaker. Now think back to the 1990s when Newt Gingrich was speaker, all of his caucus and all of the Democrats, by the way, had the ability to make amendments and influence the way that bills were constructed. But as time went on, it got to be centralized uh, with Speaker Hastert, Speaker Pelosi, and so on. And so now you had a time where the speaker would simply say, this is what we're gonna do, and all the members would have to go along with it in one way or the other. The Tea Party had very big hopes for 2010, and we were all really excited because you had so many good people getting elected. But what happened, they didn't realize that the rules and the way Washington operated was part of the problem. And that's why we continue to have years and years and years of good people getting elected, but no change that we were looking for taking place. Here in Congress, you show up on any given week with not even a notion of what you're going to do that week. You don't know when you're going to vote. You don't know what you're going to vote on. You know, it's interesting that the House rules, which are supposed to be, of course, structured uh, so that the House representative can function to do its job as the representatives of the people, often have been structured historically to empower a few at the expense of the entire body. 